Well, the, the thing is, the, the fun thing is, if you have some really good mobile equipment, you can pretty much set up anywhere. And, and you know, I, I don't like the kind of traditional you're in an office kind of setting or even at an event where you feel like you're just at a table and chair and you're, you, you know, you can do that anywhere. What's really cool is having the right kind of equipment that can go anywhere you can find better locations. And I like to think if you can find more comfortable, more casual conversations to have these conversations, well, locations yep. to have the conversations, you end up having better conversations. So that's kind of what I go for. Oh, this is the Jeez. camera. This is the latest. Thank you. First of all, thank you, Tracy. It's the the latest in my collection. I mean, I I don't even want to tell you how much I spent, but I'm just looking on my table here. Here's one. This is the box camera. Here's another one. This is the this one here is the Lumix Panasonic Lumix GH5. That was the very first camera I bought when I decided to to kind of step up my game. So that was like three years ago. And since that camera, I probably got about ten cameras, man. You know, and I don't even want to tell you how much I spent. But this last, the one that I'm using right here, this. This one I just got in about a month ago. This is the one I've been waiting for. It's the latest from Panasonic. It's their S5. What makes this one really nice is the autofocus is so good. That was the big, and I don't want to geek out too much. Tell me when you need me to stop. But these are the things that I think about when I want to be able to capture really good conversations. So I want to capture good images and good audio quality. Right. Either when I'm you know doing this or out on the go. And so those are the things I look for. So thanks, Tracy. Yeah, this I'm loving this. Uh, this camera has been really good so far. It's the one I take on the road now because it's easy to travel with. It's very compact. You can buy lenses that are pretty compact. This lens is like this, like this big, uh, but it packs a while. It gives you a really good quality. So that's the kind of stuff I'm looking for now. Great quality, but easy to travel with. Yeah, she says she's got a lighting video camera sound girlfriend and the color is so true she's a geek too yeah we can <laughs> geek out a little bit on production here and I, and I want to get into that a little bit more in fact I'm I've, I've been working on a hobby project to get my $1,500 Canon XA10 to communicate Ooh. with my laptop nice. I've not succeeded yet but that's that's a whole nother story <laughs> but, but I want to get back to Tracy's original point around the the star cart smiling people and stuff like that because you know, we'll get into a little bit more in a bit on the problems with enterprise video. But Tracy, to your point, you know, one of the reasons why I like Brent's work is that he does like to put people in a more informal vibe. And we'll get into that through, you probably saw some of his players productions videos by now. It seems like he's on LinkedIn shooting video, what, 50 times a week. <laughs> but they have a whole network. So I'm going to let Brent do a shameless plug about that at the end, what he and Paul are up to. But but for now, what I wanted to just say is I think, yeah, that's what's cool about having such a portable kit is that you can kind of just set up, sit down and talk. And, you know, and, and yet with the adequate attention to how things look and sound and, yeah. and that, and that matters, right? Because the, the advantage of the studio set in the past was that the portable kits just didn't look good enough. And the Wi-Fi connectivity sucked and all this other stuff. But I think we're finally getting to the point now where people can do what you do. Like you have this backpack full of stuff and you set it up and run. Yeah. The other thing about the backpack full of stuff and the stuff that's in the backpack, things that I know I didn't consider when I first started going this, down this path, but it became painfully obvious. You want to be able to set up quickly. You know, you don't want to have yeah. there, there's a million pieces that you could actually get stuck trying to piece together. And if you only have a certain amount of time, um, you can have the greatest stuff in the world. But if you don't have the time to set it up and make sure it works correctly, it's no good. So and and we're you know, I'm not a professional videographer. You know, my I'm, you know, an industry observer kind of person. Um, but I wanted to do quality conversations and, and create quality content so i learn i'm you know i'm still learning but you learn on the go and you you want to make sure you buy things that are easy for you to assemble in a short amount of time so that you can spend the most time with the people you're having the conversations with and 
sometimes right. you know that's one of those things that I never thought about up front, but I have definitely learned because the first last year when we first kind of got back on the on the conference scene after the pandemic stuff, Paul Greenberg, you know, you mentioned Paul. It's Paul Greenberg, who of course most people know is the godfather of CRM. He's also my co-host on the CRM Players, and and we partnered on the Players Production Network. But the first number of events we events we went to last year, we would bring all this equipment, and we hardly ever able were able to get it to work the way we wanted to because something went wrong, or we didn't have enough time to really check. And so all these lessons that I kind of learned you know, for the last year or so, year and a half or so. And I'm trying, I'm hope I'm hoping to share because it's things that you just don't think about when you first go down this path. But the key, like you said, is how do you create and have great discussions with people, you know, out there when you're at an event and you have limited time to get to them and you want to be able to have a great conversation and pull as much information and insight out of them without being weighed down with setting up a whole bunch of stuff and then it doesn't work the right way and then you're trying to tweak it and instead of focusing on the conversation so those are things that you know lessons that i learned that i'm hoping that maybe some of the arrows i took mm. people don't have to take yeah this and this we'll get into this a little more but this another thing around why is enterprise video so so boring so damn boring and one of one of the things remember about this is doing a online production speaking and every rehearsal was more focused on the lighting and the sound and the setup and and every conversation that we did during rehearsals got blander and blander and then and the best one was the first one when we were just winging it and i was like and by the time we got to the live version it was so canned and the production values were a lot better but the conversation itself had become so stilted yeah. And and I felt like man, we we lost a lot more than we gained. Because so cuz the fact of the matter is that an enterprise video the first tier is just you have to get to the point where the production values are not a distraction, right? Like you got to get there. The audio's got to be good enough, video good enough. If you're in a really loud place, then obviously you have to take that into account and try to do shorter stuff you know, longer stuff, you need a little more quiet. But the point being like, that's the baseline. From there, you, it, the way I see it, Brent, you tell me what you think. Then you start working your way up over time. You, first, you get the baseline right, where stuff doesn't go wrong <laughs> and it streams right and it, and it sounds good enough, it looks good enough. And then you start thinking about over time, fine tuning that, but without making it complicated. Yeah, I, I think the, the key to any video, regardless of its enterprise focus or it's personal, you try to have fun. Good sound is as important as good video quality image, because if the sound is jacked up, people aren't going to watch. I don't care how clear the image is or how interesting the conversation may be. If the sound is cracking and snapping and off, people aren't going to watch. So you, you, you do have those baselines. Get your sound right. Have a nice image quality. Um, make sure that you know, if you don't have great sunlight, you don't want to be backlit. You know, you want to make sure that everybody can see the faces of the individuals. Those are like table stakes. Right. But to your point, you have to have them because you don't want the any kind of any of those kind of distractions when you're actually sitting down for the conversation. Okay, let's try this one then. Yeah. Do we have was, a photo of that? Is that yeah, showing up? Yeah, I'm seeing it. Okay, that, cool. that was uh, just a couple of weeks ago at Genesis Experience in Denver. At uh, I think they were at that really nice Gaylord Center there. And and as you can see, I'm sitting, we're outside, very casual. Uh, that with me is uh, Brett. What is Brett's last name? We, Brett Weiger, Weigel. He's uh, an SVP and GM over at Genesis. And what I wanted to do, because I've, I've known Brett since his days at Salesforce, always had good conversations, and, and I wanted us to be casual. I wanted us to not be, you know, 
in that structured environment of the conference. And we right. were able to come outside. They actually, you, you can't see it because it's kind of the, the shot is kind of tight, but people are out there playing cornhole. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, a, it was like, I said, it was like a quad. Like you used to go, you know, you're when you go to college and you're a kid, you're hanging out in the quad. That's the setup that they actually have for this conference. So inside, everything is very structured. Outside, people are walking around playing cornhole, you know, mm-hmm. sitting out eating lunch. And so that's the I, I, that's the setup, you know, I decided to go with. And, you know, Brett was game for it. And and that little camera and I got a little lavware mic set up, very lightweight, very easy to, to put together. But it got I'm getting this. The image that you see here is that's the image that we got for that shot. And it, it very little effort. It didn't take a lot of time to set up. And it allowed us to focus on the conversation. And at that particular time, I think he was giving me the business because he's a San Francisco 49ers fan. And I'm a Ram uh, fan. Right. Yeah, that, that'll create some on-air tension for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how long did that take to set up that that set there? That So I think I, it took me about 10, 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I got out there a little ahead of the time. So you move the chairs around, scouted out a nice uh, piece of uh, real estate set the camera up on the tripod and it, it, and all that stuff. It's not only easy to set up the total combined weight of the camera and the tripod. And I think everything else may be about six pounds. So it's very lightweight, very easy to put in a bag and travel with and very easy to set up. 